Well, that was 10 years ago. And uh, so 10 years ago, we started up playing and we didn't have a name. We didn't have a band name. And we played duets and coffee shops and, and paid our dues, you know, and we, uh, we, we had a great time. It was a, it was just, it's such a rewarding thing to get to play music with your son, which is kind oh, of sure. an unusual thing. I mean, not a lot of people, there are lots of acts out there that do that, but we're rare and we're most blessed. I mean, I wouldn't take a, a billion dollars for the experiences we've had playing music together over the last 10 years. So we started booking, believe. you know, hoggy tonks, bars, dance halls. We started our full band back in, I think it was 20, 13 or 14, something like that. We we had a full band by then, and we we played all over Central Texas. It, you know, they they pretty much much know us around this area. You know, within 200 miles. You know, they, we've played just about every every venue you can name. So we we do it because we love it and we enjoy. It. He is is strong of passion and love for music as I do, and it's just been a an absolute joy putting it, putting our heads together on on these projects and I've you know I started studying songwriting ten years ago and I'm still studying it but it's a craft I just can't put down I just I just I know it, what it, you mean it's something I do a lot of <laughs> well, John and I can relate with that because we are longtime broadcast guys and uh, here we are you know 120 years later still doing it. Uh, because we yeah. can't put it down either. I wasn't as lucky as you. Uh, I had envisioned perhaps having a, an offspring of mine follow in my footsteps that I could work with and, uh, you know, develop uh, their own career. But uh, I wound up with okay. daughters, and none of them had none of them had the desire to do what I do. Although music is pervasive in all of their lives, but not a one had any desire to become a, uh, a, a radio personality, a music player, disc jockey, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I, I do, however, I do have a grandson in North Carolina who is very much into music and has helped me with a, uh, a number of things, which there I can relate with what you're saying about what a kick it is to work with one of your oh, offspring yeah first or second generation and uh, just be able to share, you know, share what you do and watch them learn and grow well, at the same time. And so I do well, understand that. that because nurture it because it comes with great rewards. Oh, I, I believe it. Really it. Trust me. Just, but my, just my, oldest son is, my oldest son is also with our band. He runs sound and lighting for us and all the equipment and, and photography. He's a fantastic photographer, Aaron Lucas. He's on our Facebook stuff and all, but uh, he's he's very talented. He's a very talented keyboard player, but he's never had any desire to be any, any anywhere near that stage. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can he'll sit I can run sound from the back of the room and and run our gear and hook up all the lines and cables and sound check us and run sound for us all night long. He has no desire to be up there doing what we there he are more with the ham bone that my other son was born with. I, he got my I, ham bones. I hear you. There's there are there are families like that. I know the opening number we just played, uh Jesus Loves Me by the Smith Sisters and the Sunday Drivers. Uh now the Smith Sisters are a duo, but they have a third sister who I understand has a voice every bit as rich as the two singing sisters, but she refuses to sing, period. She won't oh. even sing with the girls in private. So I, I know it, what you're yeah. saying there. It's not an you can't unheard of. Force it either. It's, exactly. It's not, it's not something you can demand of someone to do something as crazy as get up on a stage yeah. <laughs> exactly. and play music and sing a song. I mean, it's the most tomato throwing, you know, rodeo you'll ever get into. We've just been fortunate that no one's ever thrown a tomato at us. We're just very, I, very I grateful. You. The first but time I ever got up. Fear, you know, you're the, you're the back of your mind, you're thinking, you know, is this, are we doing okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the first you're time I ever lot. got up in front of a live audience, I had that same fear inside of me right to the end when <laughs> I ran off stage. <laughs> And the first thought I had after that is, when when can I do it again? John Bon Jovi, oh, yeah. you're sitting there all too quietly. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, you know, I want to touch on this, uh, you know, tomato throwing rodeo comment there. I mean, I love that. I've never heard that expression before. And I guess now I know yeah. why there's chicken wire in some of these places. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, we... 
We have a we have a uh, rule in our band that if we feel like we need chicken wire in front of us, we're not playing that gig again. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, we we played a few rough bars. I mean, you know, I mean, we played one where we had this huge crowd and we took a break. And uh, we started back up, and there was only four people left out of 75 or 80 that were out there tearing the dance floor up. We asked the owner, so, well, where did everybody go? I thought they liked us. He said, oh, no, man, they loved you guys. You guys are awesome. He said, well, what happened? He said, oh, they all went to jail. <laughs> That's a true story. So we have these big lights in our stage, and we were out in the back of this venue, so we have all these bright colored lights and LEDs going off. It mixed really well with the sheriff's department's lights in the front of the building. We had no clue what was going on. Anyway, they all oh got a big brawl That's... in the bar, and they all went to jail. And so we only had four of them left to play out the rest of our, our set. Believe me, I <laughs> well, have tales of the road that would blow your mind. I, we I'll tell you what. I it's, tell you what, you just, added, you just added one to my repertoire because I will be repeating that story. You can <laughs> bet on it. <laughs> well, you have done that an amazingly funny. wonderful job of covering most of the questions that I had to ask. I wanted to know about the history of the group, how you got together, where you're from and everything. What part of – where is here in Texas? Where are you from? Are we, we live right – if you stick your finger in the center of the map, you hit us. I mean, we are – Right in the middle of Texas, where I live in Lamb Passes, which is a uh, Lamb Passes County, and we live kind of a little north of Lamb Passes, and uh, we love it out here. It's a, it's a hoot, and it's it's so small town Texas, and and I study comedy writing too. I mean, some, something else that I do in our shows, I roll comedy into our show, <laughs> which is highly <laughs> unusual. But I have all these, you know. When, when we first started out, we had, like, four or five years ago, we had a bunch of sponsors and stuff. Things were kicking, and, you know, the music business was doing pretty good. And, and of course, COVID killed everything. And with COVID, we lost all our sponsors. We had oh. one Louisiana hot sauce company that was one of our sponsors called Dat Sauce. You ever heard of them? Oh, yeah. We kind of oh, got yeah. their name going around here. It's really good stuff. But, uh we ended up losing them. Well, I thought, well, I'll just make up some sponsors. So we've got things like Bob's Lawnmower Service, Blade Sharpening, and Financial Planning Service in Isola, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> what a combination. That's, you know, that's just so little town. You know? Or, you know, you got, uh, you know, Mary's Proctology, Gynecology, Taxidermy, <laughs> and Dentistry. You know, <laughs> you, know you have all you know, these. No one it's, does just one thing around here. They all do many things, you know. Multitasking, you know. You know, when you started that, John, I know you want to get in here, but I, I just got I just had this flash. When you said that, Lindell, when you started telling the story about how you add the comedy to your routine on stage, I, I heard your voice, and it just so reminded me of, uh, of Harold Reed of the uh, Statler Brothers, uh, oh, the yeah. voice, the comedy injection and everything. I, I just flashed on Harold Reed and your voice is similar to him. Your manner, I can believe the comedy. It's in you. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry to take the stage away from well, you. No, no, no. That's <laughs> fine. No, I just, I wanted to, no, Lindell, I wanted to, uh, to circle back a little bit to Maria. Uh, okay. Because in listening to, in listening to the song, David will, will, will tell you, as, as he does everybody, I never get to hear the music until we, uh, until we play it on the air, like right now. And uh, so that was the first time I've ever heard the song, and I was very taken with it. And the, especially, it, it has such a melodic and fluid uh, grace to it. And I want to know well, what 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 was the, um, the 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 influence, the 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 epiphany that you had, the 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 thing that pointed you in the right direction and said. Do it this way. Well, uh, I guess I'd have to say a friend of mine, Gary P. Nunn. I've known him a long time, and he he always told me, write what you know. He said, don't ever write something you don't know anything about, and and write things that are true. And he said, you'll find that people will listen to that. And that, that whole story is about me taking a vacation down in Playa de Carmen in Mexico, sitting on a beach out in Coral Sand Beach and Cobalt Blue Water and, and all these pretty gals. And it was just it was just about that. And it just inspired me to write it. And uh, and I, 
I worked on that song, I guess, for a couple of months where I hammered it out to where I wanted it. But I always try to write things that I know something about, you know, and it's kind yeah, of what I do. The best uh, it's way. Not, you did a nice job on it, very nice well, job right. indeed. Uh, before we uh, before we get to this last song, which I hope I've got the title right on, uh, <laughs> I want to uh, remind you, as I do all of our first-time guests, once you're on our show, you are stuck with that for the rest of your life. You are now a part of our oh. family, and we try to well, follow uh, our family wherever they go, keep track of them, their career, their music, their releases, whatever they're doing. And so we not only invite you to keep in touch with us, we make it easy for you. I have a page on Facebook. I have pages all over the place. But one of my Facebook pages is the David Bowers Awards Groups page. Now, that page is uh, unique in a little bit of a way in that you can post directly to that page your releases, okay. your uh, travel, your touring, your show dates, your rumors, whatever you want to share with your fans and hopefully with some new fans too, post it up on there. Not only will other people get to see it, but we'll pick up on it and share it with our, you know, on our other social media pages. So keep that in mind, add it to your PR list. Uh, you got something you want to oh. share, pop it on there. You'll, uh, you'll get some extra people that wouldn't have got it from another source and we'll spread it around too. So don't put anything on there you don't want anybody else to know about. Other than that, hey, right. if it's about you well, and your music, I, we want to hear it. I consider that a great honor. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate well, it. Well, you're very, very welcome, and we can, we consider it what we do. So that's why we're here. If it wasn't for people like you, there wouldn't even be people like us. So that's really important to us. Now, this next tune that we're going to play of yours is a tune that uh, is a little dear to my heart, a place called Padre Island that I've never gotten a chance to meet. This is, I understand, your new release, and I was struck by this. It's got a little bit of that Jimmy Buffett sound to it, or at least that's what I well, picked up in it. And that's something I didn't touch on, but I've always been influenced by Jimmy and Jimmy Buffett. And, and in fact, when, I'm, when they're trying to put me in a box, or you know, what genre are these songs? And I kind of just made one up. I call it Gulf and Western. I don't know what else to call it. Hey, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good so, one. Well, listen. So I, I, I sort of write Gulf and Western. I, I don't know what else to how to even put it in a category. It's like, <laughs> well, hey, that's a good one. And um, I wish somebody would bring back Western. Somewhere along the line, Western music uh, got lost. But that's a whole other story for another day. Lendl, we really appreciate well, you coming, spending time with us, sharing your stories, your music. Well, you're welcome. Do hope you'll do hope you'll come back and see us again sometime. I'll be sure and give to our guest yeah. our best to all the guys in the band, your brother, your uh, your son, and everybody else. And uh, keep in touch with us. We really do want to hear from you. Well, thank you. I would be glad to. Great, okay, ladies and gentlemen. They call themselves the Lucas Brothers. And here he is Padre Island. I've got my flip flops on. Sing the Jimmy Buffett Island song. Hear the beach and some cool wet sand. Pretty island girls checking out my band. Surfing girls from dust till dawn. Texas beaches are pretty dang long. Wish I could find a way and stay. Living on the beach here in Fort A. Padre Island where the seagulls fly. Blue water and a clear blue sky. The sand in between my toes. No hurry I go with the flow. Shrimp boats cruising on the waterway. Man, I couldn't have a better day. Go on. Bye. 